So why do I not have confidence in the biohacking your way to 120, 150, 180? How do I not be really, really frail, both physically and cognitively in the last decade of my life, what I call the marginal decade. You know, I don't know. I don't know if, I've got, if I'm going to live till I'm 85 or 90 or 80 or whatever. I don't feel like I have as much control over that. I think there are some elements of bad luck that factor into that. If you do that, you would not get atherosclerosis in a normal lifespan. You're not really in that camp of very confident that we're going to live to 120, 150 years old. Why is that? So why do I not have confidence in the biohacking your way to 120, 150, 180? I've heard all of these sorts of numbers. Because I don't think we have the tools to address the underlying aspects of, of the aging of biology that are kind of relentlessly pushing us towards the end of our lives. Again, that's not a depressing statement. I think it's just an obvious reality, right? So there are things about us as we age, we have the capacity to reduce the rate of change on. We can slow them down, but I've seen no real evidence that we can reverse them in a meaningful way. It's true that there are some people out there claiming that, you know, they've got their aging clock and it shows that even though their birth certificate says they're 60, they're really 35. We could put some time into explaining why that's not correct. The long and short of it is we don't have any evidence that we can take the diseases of aging and erase them or that we can take the underlying processes of everything from defects in mitochondrial function, defects in protein folding and misfolding, changes in DNA breaking and, and, and repair, breakdown in nutrient sensing, all of, all of these pathways. I just I haven't seen any evidence that we can undo that. So then what, what would you have to believe? So if you're going to believe that someone my age, i.e. someone who's 50, is going to be around in 70 years, you have to believe that in the next dozen years or so, someone is going to come up with a way to completely halt aging and or reverse it. It's not going to do me any good if this happens 50 years from now, because in 50 years, I probably won't be here. I spend a lot of time looking at this type of literature. I really do spend a lot of time looking at this technology. I haven't seen many examples where there's a bigger mismatch between what is actually happening scientifically and what is being talked about in the press, on social media, on podcasts. And that chasm is enormous. In other words, what's really happening is like nowhere near the sci-fi that's being portrayed. Because of that, and because I have confidence that what's actually happening is more a representation of reality, I know that these things are not, you know, a decade away. That's why I take that point of view. Now, why does all of this matter? I think this matters because if you knew that this was as good as it was going to get, and I don't think it is, by the way. I do think there are incremental things that are going to make a difference, even in the lives of people my age. But if you thought that, look, this is directionally as good as it were going to get, I think it would motivate you to be more serious about using the tools that we have today for primary and secondary prevention of disease, for optimizing and maximizing lifespan and health span. If for no other reason, you would do that as a hedge against the enormously long odds that something dramatic and miraculous is going to happen in the next decade or two. And to double click on a few things there, when you were talking early on about diseases, were those diseases what you call the four horsemen from your book? Is that what you're referring to? Yes. You still have to have a strategy that says, how are you not going to die of ASCVD, cancer, neurodegeneration, dementia, and of all of those diseases, the only one where I can see a pretty clear path to delay it significantly would be ASCVD if you take really dramatic steps early in life, right? So instead of talking about what we think of as primary prevention, think of like sort of ultra primary prevention, right? You know, treating people in their 30s. Now, making sure a person never, ever walks around with an ApoB over 30 or 40 milligrams per deciliter. Making sure a person doesn't even spend one year with mild hypertension. Making sure a person is always metabolically healthy. If you do that, you would not get atherosclerosis in a normal lifespan. But we don't have that degree of certainty for pushing off cancer indefinitely, for pushing off neurodegeneration indefinitely, for pushing off dementia indefinitely. Nor do we have it, by the way, for pushing off, I think, sarcopenia indefinitely, or pushing off 
arthritis indefinitely. I mean, there's these other conditions that are not as interesting to think about because they don't rise to the level of the horseman, but they matter a lot. So physical frailty is a really, really, really big one. If you manage to not die of, of heart disease, cancer, or neurodegeneration, dementia, and you're willing to train really hard, like I really do think there's a path to be physically robust as a centenarian. But I don't see a path to, to doing that at 120 or 150 unless there is a significant technologic breakthrough that would basically allow us to rewind. And, and maybe this is a different discussion and, and maybe it's a longer discussion, Nick, and, and I don't know if we want to go into it because it's a little, it's taking us a little off topic, but it really gets into what does it mean to age at a cellular level and what is the role of the epigenome in regulating our genetic code? But I don't know if there are other questions about that topic. We can certainly defer to that. You know, on that topic, I know that's talked a little bit about in the episode with David Sabatini, Matt Caberlin. And so maybe we'll pull questions from there and do a future AMA kind of diving into that a little deeper. And so kind of what I'm hearing you say is you still think that we will succumb to the same diseases that will kill us. Your goal with Medicine 3.0 and prevention is still to put that off as far as possible, but that doesn't mean you're going to put it off until you're 120 years old. The goal is to really live as robustly as possible and avoid those as long as you can, but still kind of more in the traditional lifespan opposed to the 150 year old lifespan. Yeah. I mean, I think that taking all of the steps that I talk about in, in the book could seriously add a decade to life. There's, there's, I don't, I don't doubt that you can live a decade, a decade and a half, maybe two decades longer. I, I don't doubt that, but I don't think we're talking about adding 30 years or 50 years to lifespan. Whether you're adding five years, seven years, or 10 years to your lifespan, what I think is much more interesting and much more important is reducing or compressing the period of morbidity late in life. What I think people should fixate on is how do I not be really, really frail, both physically and cognitively in the last decade of my life, what I call the marginal decade. I don't know if, I've got, if I'm going to live till I'm 85 or 90 or 80 or whatever. I mean, I don't I don't feel like I have as much control over that. I think there are some elements of bad luck that factor into that. What I feel like I have much more control over is when I'm in my marginal decade, can I still go for a ruck? Will I carry 80 pounds on said ruck? No way, but I might be able to carry 10 or 20. Will I be able to swim half a mile in a pool? Yeah. Will I be able to swim it as fast as I can now? No chance, but I could still swim half a mile and get out of the pool under my own power. Could I sit on the floor? You know, it's all those things that I talk about in the centenarian decathlon. Those are the things I think that we really want to relentlessly fixate on because I think most people would rather live to 90 and die of a heart attack while swimming in the ocean, but being, you know, otherwise in remarkable shape than live to 120 and spend the last 30 years of that unable to do much. 